welcome to Cornish Walking Trails. This is Port Looney Cove. In today's video, trusting the AMPR system has to be a big part of all of this. The slightest mistake you make, you're going to get a fine. Money grabbing, heartless private parking company ruined a beautiful beach. Frankly, I am shocked that there's even one in here. And it's greed spoiling Cornwall. It's our data. They shouldn't be bloody doing it. The planning permission on this one was turned down. The community won and the equipment was taken down. Our video will feature three coves on the beautiful Roseland Peninsula in Cornwall. Port Looney, East Port Holland and West Port Holland. They're roughly about a mile apart. All three are part of the Carl Hayes estate and we will show you how a powerful landowner was stopped in his tracks by the community. Port Looney Cove, beautiful isn't it? And lots of you agree. Look at the comments coming through on Google and TripAdvisor. Until 2021, when AMPR cameras were installed. Has this ruined a Cornish beauty spot? A quick look at the reviews on TripAdvisor and Google would suggest it has, with the overall TripAdvisor score at three and plenty of mention of the car park in the reviews. Parking fine ruined holiday memory. Do not park here. Money grabbing, heartless private parking company ruined a beautiful beach. Beautiful beach, but oh, the potholes in the car park. With visitor numbers in Devon and Cornwall down this year, are greedy landowners who squeeze every penny from their car parks playing a part. And just how greedy has it become? Port Looney Cove is privately owned by the Williams family and is part of the Carhays estate. Behind the beach is a private car park for the beachgoers and also those visiting Carhays Castle. The castle has beautiful extensive gardens with magnolias, camellias, azaleas and rhododendrons. It's open throughout the flowering season for about four months a year. The estate also has numerous holiday cottages, is a wedding venue and offers shooting parties in season. I came here this summer earlier this year and I was surprised AMPR car parking monitoring system seems to be springing up all over Cornwall. This is a remote isolated spot in Cornwall but there's still AMPR monitoring here and we'll show you later a smaller car park where it is and an even smaller one where they tried to put it in. So stick with us. Has AMPR become AMPR hell? Is it ruining our beauty spots? Let's find out. What do you think then, Andrew? Well, Port Looney, where we are now, is gorgeous, isn't it? But a lot Beautiful. of people online have said that this is actually a beauty spot that's been ruined. People have gone even further and said that this is to do with greed. Okay. And it's greed spoiling Cornwall. So David writes, what a shame money grabbing has spoiled this once wonderful beach. He's been coming to this beach for over 30 years and was shocked to find AMPR camera and parking charges all day have been put in place. And now the owners want more out of you for a poorer experience. I suppose owning half the local area does not bring in enough money nowadays. As from Leicestershire visited last year, he gave it one star. He says, greed, greedy overcharging fine given. The machines rarely work and no signal in the cove. Well, we'll, we'll have a look at that later. Do we know who owns this beach and car parking? We do. Yeah, so it's private land. Yeah. Um, there is a clue over there. <laughs> yeah. There's a great big castle. <laughs> so it's part of the Car Hayes estate. They own, well, obviously they've got the land where the castle is. They own most of the land in this area, including this beach. Are we looking at this in terms of, is it necessary? Is it easy to use? Is it from a point of view of greed? Is it ruining Cornwall? Yeah, I mean, is it putting people off as well? Yeah, yeah. Is, is, it's empty here today. It is. And it it's is. a and, lovely day. And <laughs> I know that my parents, for example, they won't come to yeah. a car park now if it's AMPR because oh. they're worried about getting a fine. And it's not just your parents, is it? Let's face it, you don't like it either. No, I don't like it either because no. there's lots of rules you've got to follow. And yeah. as careful as you are, we've still seen people commenting online that they've paid 
in a car park, mm. but they're still getting a fine. Yeah. And it really does put you off. And it, 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 you know, if we're not careful, people are going to stop going to these places. Isn't well, no, it? they might even become. It might be a boycott of Cornwall altogether. But I think that's a whole other video. Let's look at the car parking specifically today. Trusting the AMPR system has to be a big part of all of this and if you don't trust it there's always that little niggling doubt at the back of your mind. Have I paid successfully? We'll go and have a look. We'll dig our phones out, see if we've got some signal. Have a look at the charging bands. Are they fair? Would you be prepared to pay them? How are they in comparison with the rest of Cornwall? How much do you pay in your local car park? Is Cornwall expensive for parking? Or are we now getting on a par with London prices? Well, honestly, I can't answer that. You guys can help me though in the comments and let's have a chat about it. This is not the first time we've visited this beach. It is a beautiful cove on a summer's day, on an autumn day, on a winter's day. It has its own magic and beauty. Look at it out there at the moment. It is beautiful. There is no other word for it. And I remember when we visited before, that car park has been busy. So there's half of the car park. It's currently just one vehicle. I think that speaks volumes. There's just one person walking their dog. There used to be a, a guy in the shed collecting the money. And in the winter time, if he wasn't there, there was no payment. Those days have gone, and we now have 24 hour monitoring. Such a shame. What I wanna do yeah. is go up and have a look at the car park, see what's, what's going on up there. One of the things I wanna take into consideration, I noticed in some of the people have started to park outside the car park. Right. So they're actually voting with their wheels. They don't want to be involved in all of this payment. So we want to just see how many are on the road versus how many are the car park. I noticed in the summer this area littered with cars. You can probably abandon your car here and still enjoy the beach. This is the entrance to Carhaix Castle. It only has a limited opening time. I think that's partly because the gardens are the draw and they flower February, March, April. I believe it has the National Collection of Magnolias in there. Lots of azaleas, rhododendrons. Pretty takes the season through something into May and they shut in June. You can see there's a car there. Yeah, so the verge is being destroyed all the way up this road, indicating that people are using it to park and avoid using the car park. As you drive in, so you've got an option, you can either park on the left hand side, nice big space there. There's a car park here on the right hand side and your ANPR, ANPR camera is there. So the car park on the right is a gravel surface, quite potholed, and um, it's a reasonable place. I'd park there, I'd bring my car in here quite happily. I don't think I have a problem parking there. And if you manage to rock up on a day like today you'd have a fantastic sea view wouldn't you? Well, no challenge. basic there's no marks lines or anything like that no. I'd say it's a hardcore and graveled surface there's some yeah. potholes in it but it's a big area isn't it? Yeah and, and you've it... got payment machines just down here on the left. Pick the right day and the right time you might even have a sea view. Okay well that's interesting that lady in that car has just pulled in and taken a look at the sign and just pulled straight back out again. So this is the parking area on the left hand side as you come in. It's predominantly I'd say grass with a little bit of hardcore. Again there's no marked bays or anything like that but it's quite a big area. So I'd just like to put it out there this isn't a moan about the cost for parking. I haven't got any issue at all with the fees that we're asking for. They all seem fair and reasonable. My issue is the slightest mistake you make you're going to get a fine you're going to get a £60 parking notice, not a fine by the way, <laughs> but you're going to get an invoice in the post for £60 which looks pretty official and it's up to you how you want to deal with that and if you don't pay it within 14 days you're going to get a £100 fine. Some of the comments state there's no signal in this cove. Let's test that and see if expecting to pay by phone would be fair. So I've got nothing. Let's try Google. Yeah. 
No internet. Okay, so I'm trying to work, use I'm the Just screen. Park app. Yeah. And I've typed in the location there and it says yeah. no internet connection. So if we came out to do a, a walk today and we were going to be out for say, what, four hours? Yeah. So it's telling me there it's four pounds fifty. Do you agree Which with that? Which is not bad, is it? No, so uh, that's the next problem I've got. <laughs> Limited resources. Yeah. I've got notes. <laughs> I've okay. got notes on it, but that doesn't take notes. No, it's just a coin slot, isn't it? Mm. I'm perfectly willing to pay. It just has to be a method that I can use. And I think that might be part of the frustration with a lot of these AMPR systems. So we had a look online before we came. We went to TripAdvisor and we had a little look. And if you type in Poor Falooni, um, yeah. you'll... Bluffloon Beach. Most of the comments all re revert back to the car parking, <laughs> don't they? Very few say beautiful cove. Had a lovely yeah, day. And it, and it is beautiful here, isn't it? it? Is. It's a lovely it's place to come. It's such a shame. But the comments about the car park, a lot of them do come back to the fact there's no connectivity, but they're struggling to pay because they've got no signal. Mm. There's different methods of paying, but they're advertised, but they're not accessible. Yes. Yeah. And therefore, they leave the car park and they know they're going to end up getting a fine. Yeah. You know, and it's, was it 60 pounds? Is this a beauty spot ruined? Or is parking profit perfectly reasonable on private land? See all those pheasants here. So I think they do shooting parties from Carhaix Castle. In the summer, this is where they set up the marquees for weddings. Beach Meadow, doesn't that sound romantic? They use the lookout as a wedding venue and we're gonna pass that on our way to our next location, which is East Port Holland. The Williams family is one of the prominent families in Cornwall. They earned a lot of their wealth through tin mining in the Campbell and Redruth area, tin and copper mining. And here is a little bit more detail of their history. The Williams family also owns Scoria House near Redruth. As well as tin and copper mining, the Williams family were also renowned for their horses. In fact, in 1845, Michael Williams rode non-stop from Exeter to Redruth in order to beat the Quicksilver mail coach, which was carrying news of a massive surge in tin and copper prices. He managed to overtake the coach and bought up all of the available mineral rights and made a tremendous fortune. Would that wash today? <laughs> I think today it would be called insider dealing. I agree! Yeah. But the money that was made from that then was the money that was used to buy car haze. Car haze. So Effectively, is that, it, yeah, it must be. Yeah, the same, same it's frame, that sort it? of time frame, isn't it? We yeah. don't know for sure. But um, car haze at the time when the Williams family bought it was a bit of a mess. The previous owner, Trevanian, had decided to spend a fortune renovating his little house into a castle. It all went wrong for them and they fled to Paris. It was abandoned for about a decade or more before the Williams family bought it. Yeah. And now it looks like that today. It is a beautiful little castle, you've got to admit. <laughs> We're now entering Eastport Holland. It's a tiny little hamlet, beautiful cove with about a dozen houses or so, some of which are owned by the estate. Really at this time of year you're going to be coming here to park your car so you can walk the southwest coast path either side I would guess. It's really really remote out on the Roseland, it's not been urbanised, there's hardly any development, it's a real treasure, quite unique these days in the corner up there, a little tiny one, it's called Pebbles and it's a little shop. It's got some lovely cakes, we've had cake in there before. Fancy a cafe anyone? Isn't that so cute? Great minds think alike. <laughs> I, I just... I like I filming teapots. I just filmed it. <laughs> oh, you filmed it as well? Great minds though. That's what I just said. <laughs> so can I, can I say, we are now at the car park here at East Port Holland. Yes. It's much smaller than the one we were looking at a moment ago, for Flooney. This is an AMPR car park as well. Now, can you find the AMPR car camera anywhere? You the AMPR camera. Yeah. <gasps> right up in the corner. Oh, okay, that's that's it's not where like I expected. It's like the other one. But to be honest, did you expect a camera? No. Here. That's the thing. 
called this is Flooney. Quite remote, isn't it? It's yeah. the last thing you would expect to find an AMPR car park somewhere like this. It's really remote. It's and it's so to get isolated. To. It is, isn't it? What is the need for an AMPR car park here? Frankly, I am shocked that there's even one in here. That's got to be greed, pure greed. From what we can gather, the equipment, the AMPR monitoring camera, was installed before planning permission, which was granted retrospectively. If you know which way it happened, please let us know in the comments. It's just a hardcore surface here. A few puddles, a few potholes opening up. Is this maintained? I don't know. So there's clearly an honesty box here. That's all gone now. The end of honesty boxes. It's a shame. Your only other option is to park on the other side of the road and if that's full and you want to be here, this is where you have to park. The one thing we've noticed, the terms and conditions say that if you don't agree with the, the charging bands over there or the charging in principle, you have to leave within 10 minutes. Now the charging board over there says you've got the first 30 minutes free. Well, I'm reading that. If you pull into this car park, you decide you don't want to be here, you've got 10 minutes to exit. Yeah. If you do decide you want to be here, you can park up. You could be in it for half an hour. Free. What I'm not sure is if you still need to purchase a free ticket. Yeah. Don't know. But can I just say, I think the charging terms in this car park are fair. Yeah, they're reasonable. Yeah, they are reasonable. Compared yeah. to a lot of the council car parks, you, you buy the beach here as well. Yeah. I yeah. haven't got a problem with what they're asking to actually physically pay for the time you're spending in here. Yeah, I agree. So we're going to now go over to Westport, Holland where there is a little bit of a dispute in the past. Where's he gone? <laughs> there was a bit of a dispute about granting planning permission in Westport, Holland as well. Right, that's the next one over. Yeah. Okay. And now for the bit in the video where when you watch it, you'll go, oh my God, that's crazy. <laughs> the Daily Mail online site, This Is Money, said that in the financial year ending April 2022, the DVLA made £24 million selling driver details to private parking firms and local authorities, as motorists were hit with £2.6 billion in fines. Sharing your data so you can be fined. The DVLA are raking in money sharing your data to these private parking companies so you can be fined. So did you know how much the DVLA makes from giving our details to these private companies? I think it's immoral. You're uh, lost for words, I aren't am. You? Speechless. <laughs> when Andrew researched that, he was jumping up and down in the lounge. He was not happy. He was mad. I was shouting at my iPad. <laughs> he was. <laughs> what do you think? Is that another revenue stream for the government and it's good? Should they be releasing our details to private companies just because we've broken a few really stringent rules that are being zealously adhered to? What do you think? It's our data. They shouldn't be bloody doing it. <laughs> Oh, there you go. <laughs> so Andrew said he was surprised at the need for AMPR monitoring system in the car park at East Port Holland. Just a couple of hundred yards on a tiny little road, this road here, you've got West Port Holland. They're kind of linked. You can by beach walk from one to the other. This is such a tiny hamlet. It's got five or six houses in it and a tiny car park you'll be surprised that they sought planning permission to put the same equipment into this car park down here. Welcome to Westport Holland. And this is where they wanted to put AMPR equipment. In fact, I think that's the lamppost that was going to be part of the project to hold the camera. In fact, AMPR equipment was installed, again without planning permission, by Carhaze Estate and initial parking, arrogantly thinking they would get consent. Local residents were outraged and an action group called Friends of Port Holland Against Predatory and Ugly Parking Operations fought the retrospective planning application. Councillors were rallied and it went to the planning committee where residents said how upset they were by the imposition of this predatory parking scheme at the bequest of Carhaze Estate and installed without proper consultation with the planning department or engagement with residents and locals. 
Another upset resident said, I feel that the council has already bowed to the might of car haze. Well, the community won and the equipment was taken down. Planning permission on this one was turned down because it was felt it was out of keeping with the area. Look, it's a lime kiln. The other side is Lime Kiln Cottage. It's been converted into a holiday home, part of the Car Hayes Estate Accommodation. And this is part of the Cornish heritage, isn't it? Yeah. This is what went on here years ago. And I think it was possibly one of the reasons why this application for putting a AMPR and new signage in this car park was failed. ultimately failed because mm. they said it would be a bit of a blight on the landscape, I think. It wasn't really in keeping. And really, this isn't the place for that type of thing. I don't think it'll go away then. No, I, I think we'll I think we'll watch this video back in a few <laughs> years' time and find out that they've had built a multi-story car park here. Multi-story. I was gonna do a sum up, you throw me off my course Sorry. now. <laughs> I was gonna say the car park at Port Looney yeah. probably gets busy, car haze attracts a lot as well. So the the AMPR system there, whilst it's not welcome, it can probably be justified. The one at Eastport Holland on that tiny little car park, that's pure greed and an application for here well what do you call that this was bonkers <laughs> this is this is greed this is greed, and this is the thing that's ruining Cornwall's Cornwall. reputation because people are coming down and locals as well and everywhere you go someone wants more of your money, money. and they're trying to catch you out they're trying yeah. to find you and I think it's wrong what do you think do you think I was a bit too strong I think you've got it out your system oh, that's right. I mean, it's quite nice. I reckon they could put a car park here, you know. It'd be fine. <gasps> multi-story. Yeah, multi-story. Yeah, six layers high. You can't see the sea. Maybe put a, I don't know, a little penthouse on the top. Pasty shop in the corner. Coffee shop on the other side. It'd be fine. What would they charge for that? Oh. <laughs> Multi-million pound project, Andrew. <laughs>